Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to reading set number four. And what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna read uh, Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders number one. And it's sort of just a one shot, so there was no number two uh, involved with this comic for this series. So it's so a one shot from the 1950s, from the golden age of comics, and it was published by uh, Avalon Publications or Avalon Periodicals. And these guys uh, were very active in the 1940s and 50s in the golden age of comics. And um, in publishing in general, comic books was one of the things they published. They also published paperbacks and stuff like this. And they focused on um, sort of crime comics, horror comics, sci-fi, western comics. And this is one, one of their western comic publications. And they're... Their comic books from the golden age of comics, uh, they're pretty much sought after. They, <laughs> they've published some stuff that a lot of collectors, old school collectors and new collectors are, are, are chasing, right? They published Eerie Comics. They published All True Detectives, right? They published a lot of comics based on certain people, certain idols like Teddy Roosevelt and Jesse James and stuff like this. They published some... Uh, uh, bad girl comics I guess I'm not sure what you refer to them but uh, you know love comics and slave girl comics and uh, strange worlds and sci-fi okay and some stuff that's like uh, some of the jungle comics uh, and one of the ones they published was white princess of the jungle okay so they were they were really active and personally whenever I see anything that uh, from any seller that I'm buying, if they're publishing, uh, selling anything from Avalon Publications, I try to get my hands on them, right? If the price is reasonable, of course, if the price is reasonable, uh, meeting my budget, right? And this was one of the comics that I ended up getting, um, I guess a couple of years ago, maybe two or three years ago, um, that I ended up buying uh, from an eBay seller, right? So we're gonna take a look at this and Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders, um, this is uh, part of history, really. And I knew a little bit about this. I know some of my uh, history from the, the from the last century, but this went sort of beyond what I knew, right? So basically, the Rough Riders, um, I sort of got the description here from um, Wikipedia. So let me read you a couple of paragraphs as to what this refers to, okay? So from Wiki, the Rough Riders are a nickname given to the 1st United States Volunteer Cavalry, one of the three such regiments raised in 1898 for the Spanish-American War, and only one of the three to see action. The United States Army was small and understaffed in comparison to the status during the American Civil War roughly 30 years prior. Okay. As a measure tour towards rectifying the situation, President William McNeely called upon 125,000 volunteers to assist in the war effort. The regiment was called Wood, Woods Weary Walkers in honor of his first commander, Cor Col Colonel Leonard Wood. His nickname served to acknowledge that despite being a cavalry unit, they ended up fighting on foot as infantry okay so that was the beginning of what kicked into the rough riders and the second paragraph says this wood second in command was former assistant secretary of the navy theodore roosevelt teddy roosevelt okay a man who had pushed for american involvement in the cuban war of independence when colonel wood became commander of the second cavalry brigade the Rough Riders, right, then became Roosevelt's Rough Riders. That term was familiar in 1898 for Buffalo Bill, who called his famous Western show Buffalo Bill's Wild West on Congress of Rough Riders of the World. The Rough Riders were mostly made of college athletes, cowboys, ranchers, miners, and other outdoorsmen. A common trait shared by many members of the regiment was a shared origin with this with shared origin with these men being from southwestern round 
ranch, ranch county uh, country, they were quite skilled in horsemanship. Okay, so Teddy Roosevelt at the time when the Rough Riders were basically created was the assistant secretary of the Navy, right? And after William McKinley, okay, during the next presidential election, Teddy Roosevelt became president and he served for two terms from uh, 1901 to 1908 or 1909, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, okay? So this is sort of a historical piece uh, I believe I haven't read this I flipped through it but this is sort of a historical comic book referencing something that happened in real life so it's um, I found that pretty cool I, I sort of knew about the Rough Riders a little bit um, throughout my history but I didn't know their origin and Rough Riders have been um, uh, I guess have had comic books published uh, about them post this as well after this as well the most recent one being um rough riders that was released released by um, uh, aftershock comics that came out in 2016 they released uh, i forget how many issues it was i have picked it up i do have that set uh, i believe the first set anyway and then uh it ran i think for maybe four to six issues and then they did another series aftershock of rough rough riders as well so what we're gonna do is have a read through this and that's sort of a history behind this um so let's crack this open take a look inside that way we can get rid of the glare and um the artists for this as before i usually always put the tape on the side and pull the pull the comic out with the board and i usually do hold the board for reading right um and let's actually look at the grade for this for now now there's chipping along the edges of this right you can see a little bit there the cover is a little bit rough okay it's got writing on it 265 the numbers if you can see there 265 466 195 946 556 659 zero, 01 sorry 301 not sure what that is okay so Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders the Battle of San Juan Hill right and the grade for this I flipped through it when I first bought it and I believe I bought it it was great it's supposed to be graded as a two um, but I would give this a higher grade planes flying over right and we're looking at a western comic book and i believe this is uh this should be a four four story anthology okay teddy roosevelt and his rough riders chapter one the battle of uh the battle with black dawn carol and his gang of rustlers right so before we start reading this uh let's just flip through it they're staining around the staples, right? The staples are nicely intact though. Only staining around the top staple, not the bottom staple. Right. And um, while we're flipping through this, let me tell you about the, I, I looked around, I couldn't figure out who the writer for this is, okay, which is very weird. Um, well, it's not weird for the golden age of comics, uh, there's a lot of comic books out there that don't have attributes they don't you know people can guess who the writers and artists are but there was no i couldn't find a writer for this but i found who the artists were and what's this one called chapter two chapter two the men in the west um but the main artist for this for the first three stories is um Everett Raymond Kinsler and I didn't you know some of the as you know I'm not the best person with names so I don't remember reading anything from him before but after looking him up I'm pretty sure I've read other works from him just because he did a lot of work in the golden age of comics and if you want to know a little bit more about him um, here's chapter three check this out the story of this one 
the Battle of San Juan Hill. That's a main uh, main story, I think. But as far as um, Everett Raymond goes, um, there's a fantastic little short interview with him. Okay, from uh, the Norman Rockwell Museum, and the video is available on YouTube. If you if you type in um, uh, Everett Raymond Kinsler uh, pulps to portraits okay and it's a short you know 13 minute interview with him and then he starts telling a story of how he got into doing art and how he got into creating comic books and he's he became famous um, because he basically started uh, he did a lot of comic books in the 1940s and some in the 1950s um, or a fair bit in the 1950s I guess but then he started doing portrait work and he became a very famous portrait artist and he you know he has portraits of some of the greatest actors of our time actors and actresses of our time he's got portraits of presidents and scientists so there's a he's done a lot of portraits and that interview is absolutely fantastic okay if you want to look up you know who he is and what he's done and he basically did the, the artwork for the first three issues, for the first three chapters. And uh, the fourth chapter, the art, and what's this one called? Uh, I don't know if this is the Rough Riders or not. Uh, this one's called, the story's called Sharp and Flat in Swing Your, Swing Your Partner. Looks like a bar fight. Pretty cool artwork, eh? Um, and the artist for this one is Rudy uh, Palace, Palace, I believe. And he did, um, again, he was one of the artists for the Golden Age of Comics, but he continued doing artwork for comic books um, all the way to the late 1960s. And he's, uh, he did a lot of work for, um, in the 1940s and 50s for crime comics for wanted for planet comics for classics illustrated uh justice trapped the guilty and i have some of those books in my collection and we've done a reading of wanted and i believe we've done a couple of readings of crime does not pay so i'm not i can't remember if we did a reading uh with rudy's work or not but uh i like his style take a look at this fantastic artwork I'd be surprised if he didn't do any work for EC Comics. And then obviously we've got the strongman advertisements and stuff, right? And the back cover, what's the back cover? Oh yeah, send in, mail in, mail in your stuff to get your free whatever it is, right? Jim and Betty find a new treasure given. Given boys and girls, ladies, gentlemen, we give you cash or premiums. Cool. I don't know if you can hear it. There's kids playing outside and there's people doing lawn mowing and stuff like this. So let's have a read through um, Teddy Roosevelt and his Rough Riders. I'm just going to put on my glasses so we can read the fine print and everything in there. And just flipping through this again, there's no, you know, the centerfold was attached. Um, there's chipping for sure here, but you know, there's a little bit of missing cover here. Uh, but I would grade this around the three mark. Okay, the inside pages are nicer than the cover. You know, there's nothing missing from the inside pages, right? And the back cover is intact as well. So I would give grade this as around the three. And the staples are attached, but there is discoloration around the staples for the top one. Okay. So let's take a look at this. It's easy to learn dancing. What is this? Learn to dance in five days or pay nothing. <laughs> Jitterbug, rumba samba square dances 
16 amazing dance courses. Be more popular. Be more popular. That's one thing. Advertisers always try to sell, right? Wow. Dollar ninety-eight. That is expensive at that time. Tested five days. Dollar ninety-eight. That's two bucks. You could have bought twenty comics. I guess dance lessons are pretty expensive now. Mail and coupon. Let's read the let's read the fine print here. Okay. Hopefully we can zoom in so you can read it as well. Teddy Roosevelt and His Rough Riders, published by Avalon Periodicals Incorporated, 119 West 57th Street, New York, 19, New York. Joss Myers, President, Saul Cohen, Editor and General Manager, copyright 1950 by Avalon Periodicals Incorporated. All names in this period periodical are entirely fictitious fictitious and no identif identification with actual persons is intended print printed in the United States USA right. that's one of the smallest uh, little fine prints we've had right. so which one is uh, I think all of these were around the same size same uh, same length of story right so let's have a read through the first one at least I definitely want to f read through the the fourth one as well okay so maybe we'll read the first one and the and the fourth one okay teddy roosevelt and his rough riders let's check it out no chapter in the life of teddy roosevelt had affected him more than the days of his living with the rough riding men of the plains the type of men who would one day provide him with an army to lead into battle. What's this say here? The names of sheriffs, Sheriff Seth Lamson, Bill Jones, and Black Dan Carroll are fictitious. They even say that there. Okay. So chapter one, the battle with Black Dan Carroll and his gang of rustlers. Very nice artwork. I wonder who the writer for this is. At three o'clock on a cold September morning in 1883, at Little Missouri in the Dakota Territory, a young man watched a train pull away. Before he had left New York a short time previously, both his mother and young wife had died within 24 hours wow. what a place to look for lodging at this time of morning walking down the one street of town he saw that he would have no trouble waking the owner of the town's only hotel seems to be a wild west reception bang bang someone's shooting inside wanted dead or alive black dan carroll killer rustler that's the sign there inside the building ha 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 dance dad blast yo dance ha ha bill you sure are a card bang bang shooting at his feet to make him dance oh, poor bartender Hey, what's the matter? Why are you interrupting my fun? Look what's coming up. Look what's at the coming in the door. A dude if I ever saw one. Well, sure looks like the bar keeps got company. Oh, this is barkeep maybe. Say, ain't you out of place? with all them fancy clothes stranger there ain't no dancing girls here i'm looking for a place to sleep if you can show me the boss 
I'll pass up the dancing girls. Boss, why well, I'm the boss here. The one that can handle the hardware is the boss. How'd you like to do a little dancing all by yourself, huh? Don't press your luck too far, my friend. Now, if you'll stand to one side, well, I'll be. Says, you're gonna let him get away with that bill? The guy is an agitator. You just watch. I'd like to have a room for the rest of the night. Watch out, stranger. That Bill Jones is full of red eye and mighty dangerous. I reckon I was mistaken, folks. The dude ain't gonna dance after all. He's setting up trunks for the house. That right, stranger. Hmm, well, I guess if I must, I must. But only if I must, you understand? Why all? Punches him. Oh, I'll murder you. Bang. The gun fires. You are in no condition to be handling sidearms, my friend. I'll turn it over to the bartender to your better control of your senses. Oh, what? Hit me. Lucky like didn't get killed. And now, perhaps, you'll leave strangers alone. No stranger, huh? Got me all wrong. I, I. Boom, he throws him out of a bar. Yeah, can't throw me out of here. I'll get the law on you. I tell you, I got rights. Hey, ouch. And don't try to come back. I'll get even with you for this if it's the last thing I do. He didn't know I'd been out here some time ago. There's not a room in the place, stranger, but I'll be right glad to share mine with you. Joe Ferris is the name. You sure pull you should you sure sure put Bill Jones in his place. Thanks. I'm Theodore Roosevelt from New New York. Jones is typical of all bullies. So this is Teddy Roosevelt. So Teddy Roosevelt. I don't know the history of this. The... At three o'clock in the cold September morning. A little Missouri, in the Dakota Territory, a young man watched the train pull away. Before he had left New York, a short time previously, both his mother and young wife had died within 24 hours. You know what? I'm going to look that up. That's crazy. Teddy Roosevelt. Out of that meeting, a friendship grew between Theodore Roosevelt and Joe Ferris. That was the last, that was to last a lifetime. But at that time, Joe could only wonder. One in tarnations brings you out here. This ain't a fit country for a man like you. I guess I've got a lot, I've got a lot to learn, Joe, and I will. A man can learn anything when he has to. You ain't dodging the law, are you? No, something worse. I'm dodging memories, by the way. Do you know where I can get someone to take me out on a buffalo hunt? The meeting between Theodore Roosevelt and S Sylvan Ferris and William Merrifield Jones, partners in the Chimney Butt Ranch, was ordained 
cordial but restrained. The partners were suspicious of Roosevelt. Okay, so I guess we're doing a little jump here. Teddy's a real hombre. I brought him here to take take him out after Buffalo. Maybe, huh? Bit off more than you all be able to swallow, mister? Maybe you should have stayed in New York. However, the, mount, the men found Roosevelt no tenderfoot. Teddy, with you going to call it a day, there'll be plenty of dry days when we can hunt buffalo. Ah, it's raining. I see the rain coming down. Tomorrow's another day. Let's not waste this one. Nice. In time, men grew to respect Theodore Roosevelt, and he bought a partnership in the chimney chimney butt ranch while you men continue with the roundup i'm going to check check on things up here up ahead okay late that afternoon indians and they're rustling our cattle i better get back and get the men but the indians had seen him those boys mean no good, but is it wise to run for cover? They know more about fighting under cover than I do. Oh, he brings out his gun. Dismounting, Roosevelt stood squarely, coolly drawing a bead on the charging redskin. He knew that men do not like riding in on one who is cool and shooting. White ranch man means to kill. We ride back to hills. <laughs> Perhaps I can find where those redskins are heading. Racing into the foothills, Roosevelt climbed a tall tree. So Roosevelt's chasing him. There's this. They've disappeared between those boulders. It looks like they're hideout. That night, the three partners rode into town and conferred with Sam, Seth Lamson, the sheriff. It doesn't fit. Indians ain't no rustlers of cattle. They fight for revenge. They steal horses for their use. But cattle? We're going to watch that section. My guess is that something will break wide open and would be ready uh, the sheriff looks like knows uh, something is up right. and then one night a short time later there they come a whole bunch of them if we don't head the critters off they'll stampede those cattle what joe fear joe ferris fear came to pass the cattle started startled by the indians began began a stampede right men if we can head the head the lead cattle into the cliffside we may stop this oh someone's wiped out hey help it's tom his horse stumbled no oh, not good with the gray of a cold dawn tom's dead teddy yikes we're going to get get to the bottom of this outrage you ride in for the sheriff and a posse the rest of you, the rest of you follow me so we're gonna get a posse together teddy's pissed leading his men towards the hideout he had seen from the treetop roosevelt rode straight into the jaws of danger straight at them flushed them out of their cover they're coming through the canyon no kill no kill white man no kill we don't want to kill 
We want to talk. Get your men together. There's a guy in the background punching one of the natives in the face. Another one grabbing this one. Why did you stampede my cattle? Chief, where did you get those guns and bullets? White man say you take away land. White man give guns, says steal cattle. At that moment, bang, oh, someone shoots one of them. Oh, my son, my son, oh man, they killed the son. He's not gonna be happy. My son is dead. This means war, white man. Chief, that bullet was meant for me. Come with us. We will try to catch the villains. Mr. Roosevelt, I hear horses. The killers are escaping. Hurry, don't let those murderers get away. But Roosevelt realized the hoofbeats were not retreating. They were coming towards them. Sheriff, you're just in time to help us avenge a foul murderer. Well, Chief, will you will your men ride with us? Indian go with ranch man. Fine man killed my son. Indian now trail to to white man camp. Come. He's gonna act as a tracker. All that day the posse followed the trail of the Indians. Soon we come to camp where white man hide. At dusk, at dusk of that day, they reached their goal. Suddenly the thrill war cries and Indians and the fire of rifles and six shooters were heard it's black dan carroll and his gang of rustlers run for cover the redskins have double crossed us <sighs> let them fire until they run out of bullets we can stand them off until they give up or starve to death Time and again, the posse charged the barricade behind which the bandits were hiding. Time and again, the lawmen and ranchers fell back. They're stubborn, Ted. Don't know if we'll have enough ammunition to flush them out. We've got to do something. Our bullets are running low, too. I'll take the chief with me and see if there is a way to take them from the rear. Meanwhile, you keep them busy from the front. Okay, Teddy, but be careful. Cautiously, they inched their way over the rough terrain. Suddenly, wait, listen. You have good ears, Chief. I can't hear a thing. What is it? Suddenly, out of the half-darkness, a figure crept stealthily through the thicket nearby. This trail may lead us to where they are hiding. Let me handle him. Wow. Roosevelt saying he's going to handle it. There's a guy creeping along. And the chief has got his knife out. He's going to go after him. Roosevelt sprang through the air, landing hard and at the same time clapping his hand over the mouth of his victim to prevent his crying out. So it's you, Jones, trying to get Revenge for the lesson I tried to teach you the night I arrived here. No, honest, I ain't done nothing. Well, let, 
let a let a court of law decide that it's the guy from that bar don't kill me i'll tell you everything i'll show you how to get black dan by the back trail But, but Theodore Roosevelt needed no help from Jones. He had discovered the back trail into the bandit camp. All right, you men, surround her or we'll fire. Well, I'll be, it's Roosevelt. You did a real job, Ted. Unsnarled. You own problem and captured Black Dan in the bargain I've got to convince the Indians that our ways of justice are best oh yeah the chief will probably want to kill the guy Roosevelt did persuade the Indians to allow justice to be meted out in the white man's court the jury will soon be out you will see how a court of law works chief We find all the defendants guilty of cattle rustling and murder. You see, Chief, the lawbreaker will be punished. Good. White man's way is good for Indian too. Oh, man. Not so, not so. What a good heartwarming story, no? For a year, Theodore Roosevelt helped Sheriff Seth Lam Lamson. Then, one day, I'll be sorry to see you go, Ted. What's the letter say? The Citizens Committee in New York City has asked me to run for mayor. I'd rather stay here, but it's a job I can't refuse. Ah. So was he the mayor of New York the first time? I don't know Roosevelt's history. And so, farewell. So he's going to run for mayor of New York, huh? Well, it wouldn't surprise me none if that hombre one day runs for president too cool. this is still the rough riders i wonder if this is in new york no i can't be in new york chapter two. Oh, there's boxing in here Ooh, okay let's read this one too <laughs> yeah okay cool teddy roosevelt and his rough riders chapter two the men of the west nice artwork 260 brave american soldiers lost their lives in the terrible sinking by explosion february 15 1898 in the harbor of Havana, Cuba. Oh, this is the, uh, nice. <laughs> Excited to read this one now. Uh, Cuba of the United States battleship Maine. The blast echoed throughout the United States in an indignant cry to avenge our nation's honor. Remember the Maine, the people shouted. The Spanish-American War followed with thousands answering the call for the colors wow. of course there's a different version of the history of this right but we're gonna stick to this one in the years that have passed since his, since his western adventures theodore roosevelt had become assistant secretary of the navy at the outbreak of the war with Spain, however, he resigned his post. Uh, so this goes uh, connecting up with uh, what we read uh, regarding Rough Riders, right? But Mr. Roosevelt, do you, do you think it wise to resign his, this important office and actually go into battle? I've been for this fight against oppression all along if there is to be a war I'm getting into it personally he's got a big 
thick mustache now, right? When Congress authorized the first United States Volunteer Cavalry to be made up of rough riding men of the Western Plains, Theodore Roosevelt obtained a commission as Lieutenant Colonel of the regiment. Under Colonel Leonard Wood, the response was tremendous. That's what we read in the, the wiki page, right? These men will make mighty good soldiers, Colonel Wood, and our hardest task will be reject, rejecting thousands of good men who want to fight. To each man who joined, Theodore Roosevelt gave warning. Once you've joined up, there will be no turning back. Bucky O'Neill was a college graduate, a newspaper man, a poet, a fearless lawman, and one-time mayor of Prescott, Arizona. Once when he was sheriff of Yavapai, Yavapai County in the early spring of 1889, Oh, hum. I wish there was something more for a sheriff to do than read poetry. Bucky didn't know that the night before, not far from Flagstaff, Arizona, we're slowing up. Don't suppose there'll be any express to pick up. There's a train going by. Hope not. With the money and jewels we're tooting for Wells Fargo, I'd soon as have no stop at all in this wilderness. Nary a thing for you this run. Good. We'll be rolling as soon as I check the bo boilers. Oh, there's thieves coming on. We'll be just a slight delay till you have that datter express door open up that that is i don't know cowboy talk very well what's the name of this again the men of the west chapter two the men of the west okay let's continue so the train is being robbed after a ride of five miles in the wilderness of the hills the bandits stopped there's the divvy. Now I reckon we ought to ride north. They're splitting it up. Okay, Smith. By the time maybe word of this gets to town, the trail will be so cold they won't even find us. It was the telegraph agent who, the next day, interrupted Bucky's poetry reading. Bucky. The East West Express was robbed last night at Canyon Diablo. By the time we get a posse, posse my eye, I'll, I'll be my own posse. From Canyon Diablo, northward across the little Colorado, Bucky O'Neill followed the trail of his own institution rather than any hoof prints or other signs of direction the bandits had taken they went north into utah they had to go that way it's where they feel safest and around canyonville utah is the only place they could get fresh supplies he knows the country huh? he traveled for days guided only by his instinct then picking up bits of news along the way he found the trail growing warmer until oh man you got them at last a surprise attack single-handed no use going any further hombres might as well give up you got us bucky 
there was also Ben Daniels. So this is one of the people. Roosevelt. Oh, this is this guy that we just read the story of the origin of this guy that was talking to Teddy Roosevelt, right? I won't turn back, sir. The name's Bucky O'Neill, right? So this was a little history gap in time. Cool. Let's read the next one. Here's the other one of the other rough riders should check to see if the names of these people are accurate actually at the beginning it said the names weren't so there was also ben daniels marshal in the rip-roaring town of the old west dot city he too was wise to the ways of lawless men and fearless in performance of his duty yeah yippee so this guy's Ben Daniels. Let's take a look at the front page, the first story. So the first story, they're all fictitious the, for the first story anyway. Sheriff Seth Lamson, Bill Jones. Was there a little tag on the front of this as well? For this story, there was no tag saying that the names are fictitious, so they might be real. If you're a history buff, it might be cool to look these up. Let's see if I can find anything from these. Ben Daniels. Who's those hombre cutting that? Scrimmage through here. Anyway, Ben, who's those hombres cutting that scrimmage through here? Anyway, Ben. So this is Ben. This is the guy's origin story we're reading. I don't know. It's no ce celebrating, boys. See, they're coming back through town again. That's right. Accommodations, Ben. We'll give them as good as they're sending out. No, they won't return. They're making a cover for something more important. Come on with me and keep your guns ready for action. Ah, so this is a diversion. Okay, hand over that there. Bar X payroll. Ain't, ain't doing trying to be funny. Okay, I won't argue down the barrel of a six gun. So they're trying to rob the payroll. Daniels, all right, hombres, reach for the sky. Lucky I remember the bar X keeps his payroll money here in the safe. All right, March, we have a jail here for safekeeping for hombres like you even if we don't have a bank but as they reach the streets the marshals trying to take our boys come on you jump scrimmagers should have figured them out F figured on them. they're attacking well we saved the bar x payroll anyway ben that's not enough those rats belong in jail and that's where they're heading. Get your horses, men. We're riding. We're gaining on them. If we keep up this pace, we'll catch them, catch up to them before they hit hit that rocky land and hold up. If they reach there, Ben, we may as well give up. We haven't got enough ammunition to keep them bottled. The distance narrowed and Ben Daniels and his men fought it out in a short hot battle. Keep blasting away boys, we've got those hombres about where we want them. They never were a match for the kind of fighting, fighting you dish out Ben. Back towards the town, Ben Daniels drove, drove the defeated bandits. 
back to jail there to await their fate at the hands of a court of justice they caught up all of them another guy from the Rough Riders and Tom Reining soldier, cow puncher puncher, sheriff ranger he grew up in the rugged life of the west began in Del Rio, Texas as a youngster in partnership with a carpenter named Bradley let's call it a day Tom I'm heading across the road for shot of a shot of red eye. You coming along? No. I rather finish up here, Brad. I'll stop by for you on the way to the hotel. An hour later, Reining called for his partner. I'm through, Brad. Want to come along to the hotel now? Yeah, sure, Tom. Oh no, you don't, youngster. A man comes in here to drink. You want your pal? Yeah, first buy a drink with him. Oh, push it. Get your paws off me, stranger. If I drink, I'll pick the time and place myself. Nice. Why, you darned little punk, I'll some other time you clumsy ox whoa hold it you hombres uh, that's the sheriff coming in he's got a star right there he's got the star right there gates there'll be no brawling here for anywhere else around or anywhere else around del rio come on tom that hombre is full of red eyes it looked like the fight was over, but as the men turned back to the bar, look, if you want to fight this out, come back, come back of this place tonight after dark. Ooh, mister, I'll be here. I'll be there. He accepts the challenge. This is where they're going. Fist fighting, bare knuckle. The two men met that night and it looked bad for Tom Rining. Gates was a mountain of muscle. After I've laid you out, Gates, maybe you'll go easy with your big ideas. Get your fists going, mister. You can talk from your bed if you lives through this. Like that, you mean? Poof. Oof. Oh, I'll grunt, kill you. Straight out stomach punch. That'll take him out. Tom Reining traded blows with his massive opponent. That little guy can sure dish it out. The fight lasted over an hour. Each man had taken plenty of punishment. Finally, wow, that was Gates lullaby all right an hour of fighting joe gates kept his distance after that meanwhile tom joined the eighth united states cavalry one day arriving from a scouting assignment the big guy pushing that recruit around it sure looks familiar reminds me of well i'll be it's the same guy Check it out. That's Gates. Joe Gates. You haven't changed much since I since the old Del Rio days. Rining. Look, we ain't gonna have any trouble. Reckon I got to get back to quarters. In February 1889. The men of the fort were out trailing, trailing Sitting Bull, but somehow he had slipped over the border into Canada. 
this is far as we go man you mean we can't follow that critter anymore wow the mounted police will not let us into canada say it's sure it get getting warm guess a chinook is coming up a chinook is a sudden draft of hot air that covers a broad plain area in only a matter of hours winter had turned to summer that night it was hot tom rining unable to sleep came out of his tent watch how you flick those ashes gates this prairie grass could fire up in a moment and there's no hose hose company out here to put it out reckon i've been around as long as you later that night the morning of a buggle buggle roused the men from their sleep the prairie was a fire what fool started that fire quick we've got to find a safe spot there's a pond a mile or so up sir we may make it if we try if we hurry the men placed their supplies in the pond and worked desperately to ward off the fire that was sweeping the plains. Only a switch of the wind's direction could spell their doom. The flames struck with devastating suddenness, destroying everything in its way, gaining momentum from the very updraft of its fierce heat. The men huddled, hoping, praying, in the lake all life was destroyed except the men who had survived the blaze Rining, I never meant to do nothing like that you can't turn me in you have you have to live with what with your conscience gates that will say more than I ever could Some food had been saved, but there was no grass for the horses. Lungs were scorched by the heat air. If we don't find food for the horses, cough, we're sunk. We could try skinning the bark from those cottonwoods, sir. In time, the horses learned to tear the bark from the cottonwoods themselves, but now the men's own food was giving out. We'll be lucky to get through this alive. Captain, look. Look, there's food. Why can't we? One of the horses is down. Rining's hand reached for his holster in a flash his gun was leveled it would be like killing someone of our own command company now gates wants to eat him i heard you warn gates last night tom we'll deal with them when we turn to the post when we return to the post gates was not the type taken into the rough riders bucky o'neill ben daniels and tom rining were the volunteers now we're ready to leave for training at San Antonio, Texas. Suddenly. So we're back to the recruiting of the Rough Riders. Hey, wait up, mister. I want to hide out with this outfit. Not a chance. The men are already chosen. Who's this guy? You got to let me, mister. I'm anxious for a chance at them Spaniards. Get aboard and see if they'll take you in San Antonio. Good luck. In Texas. I really want to fight with this outfit. What about a Colonel Roosevelt? Okay, you're the only trooper to get in without examination. 
I hope you make it good. I hope you make good. At San Antonio, Teddy Roosevelt turned, turned his raw recruits into a fighting unit of trained soldiers. And after three weeks of training, embarkation from Port Tampa, Florida, as fine a group of fighting men as you'll find, find anywhere in the world. The country is going to be mighty proud of our boys. The fine print note, for obvious reasons, the name, the name Joe Gates in the history is fictitious. Uh, Joe Gates, Joe Gates was the, this guy, the guy who started the fire and who, uh, what's his name? Uh, this guy, a uh, Rining beat up earlier right so joe gates name is fictitious but i'm assuming the rest of the names are are the real names of some of the rough riders we got two more to read and i guess this goes uh the battle of san juan hill let's continue reading because this is sort of a interesting take on uh how the rough riders came to be and who they were and what they did so why not why not chapter three the battle of san juan hill teddy roosevelt and the rough riders no notes on any fictitious names on this one okay on june 22nd 1898 under the protection of the big guns of the united states fleet the rough riders landed in cuba it was a welcome move for they were men of action and they had been confined to their transport too long now they were ready for the big push it's nice artwork very detailed very nicely detailed look at the faces nice artwork. The motion in these old age comics is fantastic, really beautifully done. From a wharf, Theodore Roosevelt and Bucky O'Neill were supervising the unloading of men and supplies. When? We're capsizing, I can't swim a, swim a stroke. Oh man, those two men out there, they'll drown, sure as shooting. I'm going after them. Bucky O'Neill swam out towards the struggling men. He divided, dived beneath the surface of the water in a vain effort to save them. I'm sorry you couldn't have, you couldn't, you couldn't have made it, Bucky. But a soldier has got to face death one way or another. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's not the facing of death that matters, sir, but it's rotten luck to come out here and die by drowning. Ironically, though, they were unlisted as cavalry. All men except high ranking officers or orders on orders from the War Department were denied the use of their mounts. It is the duty of a soldier to accept his lot. If we cannot fight on horseback, we must make as good a showing on foot. Scouting was done by the highest officers and some of the most trusted men. On the night of June 24th, 1898, the army began to march. The men slept as near the enemy as possible, and at the break of day, they were up, ready for action. This is what we have been waiting for. Let each one take his place and do his duty. Let's see how they portray that as Spaniards. 
the whole hillside burst into a seething explosion as the Americans opened up their first broadside in the war for the liberation of Cuba from the yoke of Spain. Fire, boom, crack, crack, crack. Fronts. Those guns out to blast the enemy clear to kingdom come. The enemy had been waiting for the first blow and returned the fire. We're in plain sight of them. Take cover. Captain O'Neill, take your men to the right. I'll have some men work through the jungle to the left. We'll sneak up on them from the rear. I reckon we'll give them quite a surprise party. As Roosevelt wheeled his mount, that shot nearly got me. It came from behind our own lines. Yes, Colonel, there must be a sniper around. As Roosevelt went off to direct the left flank movement, he found Captain Cap Capron were having trouble with snipers too. They've knocked out quite a few of our men. They're using smokeless powder. We can't spot them. We'll fix that, Captain Parker. Move that Gatling gun up this way. The Gatling gun. It's the ones that shoot. The trooper turned the Gatling gun on the trees in the surrounding jungle. They're dropping like flies. It was a foxy move on the enemy, but they can be beaten at their own game, huh? But when the Americans reached the entrenchment of the Spaniards, well, all be doggone, they stole on a march on us. I was just itching to get me, get my hands on a few of them too. Some of them may have holed up in these buildings we've got them on the run but the war is far from over the enemy had been completely routed from their first position but they had left supplies that could be put to good use. You never know when we will need these supplies and ammunition. We'll make camp, then pick up the dead and wounded. The wounded were helped, but there were some beyond any beyond all help. Among them was Captain Elin Cap Capron, one of the regiment's finest soldiers. Preparation was started at once for an attack on the enemy's new position. On June 30th, the march against San Santiago began. In the early dawn, the regiment waited impatiently for the order to charge the enemy that held San Juan Hill. Buck O'Neill paced before his men, his bearing erect, his manner calm. Captain, get down. The sniper is sure to see the fire in your cigarette. The Spanish bullet isn't made. That will kill me. <laughs> oh, no. Crack. Arc. Captain. Hey, Bucky's hit. Bucky O'Neill never feared life, and he never feared death. It looks like his number was up. Oh my God, he got killed because of smoking a cigarette. Bucky. Theodore Roosevelt, his voice ringing 
with challenge to his men, rode first as he gave the command, Charge! As the lines began to move swiftly, Charles Buckhold, the man who had been the last to join the Rough Riders, sprang to his feet. Oh, that's the guy. Tom, hey Tom, quick! Give a look at Buck. Buck, hold it. He's deserting. He's running away the other direction. I never figured Buck Hold was yellow. There is a way to treat deserters. Tom, can you tell what is wrong with this gun? It's jammed up. Now time. No time. Now to turn into the gunsmith buck, but wait, take this buck. Oh, his gun was jammed. Take this buck. Reckon that hombre ain't gonna, gonna need it anymore. They're taking it from a dead man. Buckled. You are a disgrace to the uniform. I'll give you three to get back into the front line, or I'll give you what all deserters deserve. Ugh, oh, 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 deserter. Yes, <laughs> just watch me, sir. You just keep your eyes on me. And he goes into the fray. The charge was a culmination of careful planning. It was fierce from the start. The enemy met the Americans with deadly fire. Sweep to the top of the hill. Now that we've begun, nothing can stop us. The enemy resisted stubbornly. They held tenaciously to every inch of ground before giving way the wild Bronx all right but we're sure gonna to bust them up that's the spirit boys give them everything you've got on notice a wounded Spaniard had raised his rifle and had drawn a bead on the coal now at that very second Ben Daniels turned his eye towards the officer, towards his officer. Jumped on him. Ben Daniels saw danger, acted promptly. Colonel Roosevelt didn't even know he had been menaced. Every man in the regiment would have done the same. And then, at last, they're on the run. Yippee! Let's stampede them. By the time San Juan Hill had been secured, night was falling, and the men worked desperately digging in. We've got them. We've got them bottled up by land and sea, but they'll make it hot for us while they can. By the end of the second day of the siege, almost all of the food ration had been exhausted. These are lean rations, boys, but we've got to make it last. Colonel Roosevelt, sir. There was some supplies left in the blockhouse. I reckon I could get there and cook up a kettle of soup for the men. Sort of feel I got to bring it to your attention. That ain't yellow any, anyhow. Glad you said that, Buck. Holt. That's Buck again. I want to apologize publicly, Buck Holt. I completely misunderstood your reason for running to the rear. Thanks, sir. His gun jam, Colonel. Actually, there's no braver fighter in the regiment than Buckholt. Is that so? Oh, 
running fast and crouching low, Charlie Buckold braved the enemy fire. He's going to make it. Oh my God, he ran running through to get some food. An hour later, reckon the return trip ain't gonna gonna be any picnic and he's got the food halfway to the trenches hey i'm hit got me in the leg somebody nap the soup before it gets cold <laughs> hold it up charlie we'll give you a hand Tom Ryling, Tom Ryling slowly made it, made his way towards the wounded buck hold. I'll be with you in a couple of shakes. Might have been worse though, could have spilled <laughs> the darn stuff. Funny. Easy Charlie, there's just a little way now to go. The soup brought back the spirits of the men. Come on, boys, let's toast Charlie Buckhold and Tom Rining. Oh, it was nothing, he says. The siege was now in its third day, and the men felt that the Spaniards would now make a desperate effort to drive the Americans from their position in order to free the isolated city of Santiago. Then, Kona Roosevelt, look, sir, a flag of truce. I'm on the opinion that the war may be over, over for us boys. Theodore Roosevelt was right. When the red tape of official Washington had become unraveled, orders came for their return to the United States and then back home with the cheers of the throngs ringing in their ears the men rode proudly behind their commander little realizing then that in a few short years many millions more were to follow the leader of Theodore Roosevelt as 26th president of the United States So that's sort of a three-part story of Teddy Roosevelt of just where he came from and taking us to the Spanish Civil War. Let's read this last story too because um, I sort of want to savor the art for um, Rudy Palace, right? Because I like the artwork here. It looks beautiful. And I'm not sure if it's related to Teddy Roosevelt or not. Looks like it's like a straight up cowboy story, right? So let's take a look. So this is uh, sort of chapter four, I guess. And all three other, the three other stories were six page, uh, were eight pages, and this is supposed to be a six page story, okay? So let's have a read through this. And I wonder if that's the signature of the artist right there. The other ones didn't have, I don't think. Let's take a look. Yeah, there's no signature on the page here. But this one does. I can't read it though, so. I'm assuming it's our artist, Rudy. Let's check it out. Sharp and flat, swing in your partner. In the Old West, there were no radios and no jukeboxes, but the folks liked nothing better than a good evening of music and dancing, and around High Hollow, they knew whom to call on for the music. It was those two wandering musicians, those music makers of the Old West, sharp and flat, and sometimes they provided more than just 
country music. <laughs> so Sharp and Flat are the, are the two guys. I'm assuming it's these two guys. Okay. Nice artwork. Look at that. Beautiful. Notes fly. One day, at a colony of new settlers just outside of town, here we are, Flat. Looks mighty quiet for a new settlement. So Flat is the little guy, the shorter guy. Sure it does sharp. We ought to be able to pick up a job or two here. They could stand some music. Let's ask their fella. Let's ask the fella. Say, partner, how about some real hold down music around here? Yep, we play a mean square dance. Maybe you heard of us, sharp and flat? Nope, never did. And nobody wants any music around here. No, sir. See, we're moving. We we bought this land back east from the from the Ajax land company, but it's jinxed. We're pulling out. But that's a total loss. You lose all you paid for it. Suddenly, Carson, you hear? Yep, I'm buying this jinx land off these folks for half price. Helping them out. <laughs> that's right, Mr. Carson. Here. Here is real generous giving us half what we paid ajax for bad land why do you say the land's jinx son when cattle die like flies and folks turn sick for no good reason that land's jinx that ajax outfit sold us bad land that's all i'm glad to do this for you for you good people I'm big hearted that way. Remember, you all are all you all all be at my farewell party for you tonight. We're mighty grateful, Mr. Carson. Getting half our money back is better than nothing. Let's go flat. No music wanted here. When did that blowhard Carson get so generous? search me i never thought he'd do anything anyone a kind turn especially with money involved but he's doing it him and his parties he hires us for for nearly nothing and makes us play till we drop you're right sharp but it's better than no work at all sharp don't get mad but i saw this bird carson before i agreed we'd play at the party he's throwing tonight oh flat i told you not to take any 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 more jobs from him shucks now we'll have to go through him through with it come on let's get back and so that night swing your partner one two three turn to the left and there she'll be Psst, sharp here comes carson again louder play louder you hear what do you think i'm paying you for louder and faster yes sir we'll try come on folks have a good time it's all on me, you know. The skin filled flint wander where he gets his money, buying land at half price. The more I think of it, the less it seems like him helping those settlers out so they only lose half their money. It beats me, Carson. 
It beats me too. Carson never did anything for anything nice for anybody. Hey, where are you do where are you going? To get me to get to get my microphone for the real. It's in the back. Keep playing. So it's taking off to get the mic right here. Here it is. Hey, that's Carson's voice. Them settlers are all willing to sell, boss. Only a few are holding out. So that's the Carson's voice in the background, in the black. Okay. You better get out there now. Take some more ars arsenic. You know what to do. What to do. Convince them that the land is jinxed. Has been poisoning with arsenic. Hey, what's up? You look like you found gold, not gold, something else. Come on, give them an intermission. We've got some uh, following to do. I'll explain on the way. Soon after, at the settler's land, sharp and flat, watch a figure. There he is, he's pouring arsenic into the water. You're right, Sharp. That's one of Carson's men. What's he doing by the stream? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. That's flat and that's sharp. Watch out, he's seen you. Come on, let's get him. got sweat pouring out of him this is for you oh that bottle he dropped it he was pouring it in the stream it's arsenic it was poisoning the water that's why the settlers cows died suddenly they drank from this from the stream and the settlers used this water for cooking that's why they took sick big heart of Carson was forcing the settlers to leave the land. Let's get back and upset this, his apple cart. Yeah, always wanted to tell that vermin off. Off they go. Oh, crack. Let's take a look. Soon, soon after, back at Carson's party. Where have you been? We want music. You all only get half pay for this night. Is that so? Well, Carson, we got something for you. Yeah, what? Crack. What did he smack him over with? With a guitar, I think. This. We're also wise to your arsenic poisoning. They know too much. Oh wow, they're coming in. Yeah, and they hit the boss. His goons are here. Right. Quick, flat, behind the piano. Some of our other instruments are there. Got, got him. Hold on to him while I teach him a lesson. I hope you like the bull. Bull fiddle. It's a nice instrument. See? Bam. Nice. And here's a little something you can keep. Punch. Oof. That's enough out of you, you little runt. Oh, sharp. I'm coming flat. This is like an Avalon Costello almost. Tag team. We're Lauren Hardy, right? A little bit more serious. Look at this art. Beautiful. This is this is a new way to play the slide trombone. Boom. Ow. Let's take a look, closer look at this man. When the fight ends, say, you fellas gone crazy? What's the idea of breaking up Mr. Carson's party for us? Big hearted Carson was behind what happened on your new land. He was your jinx. 
What? That's here. He poisoned the stream on the land that you and your cattle used. I reckon the courthouse can clear this up right. Come on over here. Come on over there. And soon on the courthouse record books. Here it is. Ajax Land Company, Carson owner. See Carson owner. You see, he sold the land under that name, then was getting you to sell back to him, back at half price. He intended, he intended selling the other settlers, then pull the same stunt. It even, it even made him look big hearted, but his scheme is done for. We'll see he gets locked up in pronto, locked up pronto. And we folks owe you settlers a lot. How about finishing that party ourselves? And soon after, swing your partner, hold her tight. Dancing makes the day and right right hooray for sharpie sharp and flat hooray yahoo this is a real party thanks to sharp and flat nice what about their instruments i wonder if there's more stories with sharp and flat in other comic books i've never come across them out of the blazing west for the first time roy rogers sensational televiewer <laughs> 25 cents <laughs> awesome roy rogers your last chance only for 10 cents amazing <laughs> look at this let's go pal i'll prove i can make you too an all-around he-man fast or it won't cost you a cent says george f Fawcett, world's greatest bodybuilder, 1950. Larry Campbell, Rex Ferris. Fun read, fun read. It's definitely a piece of history, that's for sure, right? It'd be cool to check out the history of the Rough Rider Teddy Roosevelt and see if the names of these people are accurate. And, and if Roosevelt lost his wife and both his mother and young wife had died within 24 hours right wow that's sad teddy roosevelt and his rough riders number one from 1950 avalon publications very cool hope you enjoy it and this is a good way to come back to reading set number four yeah that's it for now i'll see you guys in the next uh, reading